Um, so with that is a little bit of, of macro news. I think we should get into um, you know introing today's guest, who is Josh uh, Book. He's the chief partner, chief partnership officer of Triumph Pay. Good to see you, Josh. Mike, it's thanks for having me. It's great to see you. Grace, nice to talk to you again. It's good to see you. I know. Happy to talk cool. with you, too. Thank you so much for uh, joining us on the show. And, and hey, to, to start this off, uh, let's uh, for our audience who does know who Triumph Pay is, which catch up if you don't, uh, well, let's give them a little overview of what you're doing for our inter- industry. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. So at the highest level, Triumph Pay is the payments network for global logistics. We facilitate uh, frictionless settlement of logistics invoices for shippers, for brokers, for 4PLs and carriers and factors. And while doing that, we're identifying and eliminating fraud within the logistics industry. So the easiest way to think about us is we're the visa of global logistics. We're also a member of the Triumph financial family, which means that we're publicly traded, we're regulated, uh, we're a financial institution that's a member of the FDIC. And because we have visibility to nearly 50 billion in freight, and we pay over 280,000 carriers each year, we have tremendous visibility into the movement of goods in North America in particular. How's that? Yeah, I wanted to maybe ask you for an insight or two, just based on that visibility, when you see so many payments, you're probably the first to see when the volume of um, transactions increases or decreases. Kind of what are you seeing in the in the marketplace right now? It's it's traditionally a, a busy time for for shipping items. What, what are you seeing? Yeah, Mike. I mean, you you just touched on it a minute ago. You know, the the, the big news was that uh, online spending for Black Friday was nine point eight billion, up seven and a half percent from last year. It's a record again. That's fantastic. Except, what's behind that? Right. That's that. First of all, it's only online spending. Is that really a sign of economic health or is it just a sign of consumer patterns on where they buy, but not necessarily how much they buy or how strong the consumer is right now? What what we do is we look at what the trucking industry in particular can tell us. Uh, And every single year since I've been in logistics, I'd be curious, what Grace, what you think. But since we've been doing this, we've seen seasonal sales increases in retail and CPG drive increased prices for over the road freight moves, right? Trucking rates always go up this time of year. And that's due to primarily just increased loads without increased capacity. This year, prices have bumped up and down for the last six or seven months, but are largely consistent, no no material increases. At the same time, we're seeing tender rejection rates that are only a a very small increase over the past two months and are still less than 50% of what we would expect from a healthy seasonal market this time of year. And yet we know, because we're making all these payments, we know that and we can see that there's been modest capacity attrition in the trucking space over the past few months as the freight market continues to struggle, rates continue to be low, and some carriers and drivers are just parking their trucks. And so what I would tell you is, it's, it, while it's maybe a slight oversimplification, because trucking capacity is reduced, but pricing hasn't increased, it suggests that overall demand, load volume, hasn't increased like it normally would during the season. And that, to me, is a, is a significant area of concern for the retail sector. Uh, you know, I want to follow up on the answer as well, because... I actually have a pretty long relationship with Triumph Pay and some of the businesses I've been in as well and a big fan. But what's unique about your business is that not only do you get to see the carrier side of things, but the brokerage side of things too. How is how is that, uh, everything that you just stated, trickling into what you're seeing in, in, in brokerage at this time as well? Well, I mean, I think it's it's no secret that we've seen brokers – that have struggled in this period. We've seen some that have done very well. Uh, a lot of the the, the brokers that have, have uh, invested in their businesses for a long period of time, but with good, stable profitability all along the way are doing excellent right now. But we've seen, as has been well covered in freight waves, we've seen uh, maybe some that, that you know got ahead of themselves in their business models didn't, didn't focus entirely on profitability and maintaining margins the way they needed to. And, and those have obviously struggled. 
Uh, and, and I, you know, it, the way we look at it for the next 18 months, we see that just continuing. We see, we certainly see that the there there will be a rebound, whether that's six months, 12 months, 18 months. Our our money is on probably 12 months uh, before we see material increases in freight rates. And so for for us, I think if, if you're a broker, it's it's going to continue to be time to stay the course, manage margins, do good, you know, work, take good business, and then manage your costs. And and for those that do that, I think they're going to come out just fine. Yeah. So a, a shipper listening to that, um, you know, is thinking, yeah. well, it's, it'll, be an, it'll be another good, it'll be another easy year if I'm a logistics manager, right? I mean, it's in the, <laughs> well, don't have to worry about tight market another twelve months. You know, what, what advice would you be giving them? And, and is there a way to use for, for them to use your service to, to stamp out, you know, fraud or, or other um, areas? Yeah, I mean, especially in the retail and CPG side, what we're seeing um, over the last last few months. Uh, is a is a shipper that is saying, look, it may not be it may not be a great time for us right now either, right? We we may struggle a bit too, but there will be a rebound in consumer behavior. The econ- overall economy will rebound and will grow, and and so those that are thinking about that in the in the context of that's going to be in six six twelve eighteen months, they're making moves now in order to take advantage of that uh, when that time comes. And so the biggest focus that, that I see them having these days is, is really focusing on working capital. Uh, shippers, particularly retailers, are starting to really take a, a hard look at how do we maximize working capital right now so that we can make the investments now that will help us com- gain competitive advantage over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And so what what's changed, though, is, it, you, you know, when... Let's go back to early 2020 when money was effectively free, right? Uh, if people wanted to expand working capital, they'd just go to their bank and they'd borrow more money. Today, because rates are so high, because interest rates are high, and, and we don't expect material degradation of those rates over the next year, companies are turning to programs like supply chain finance, and they're looking to extend supplier terms to be able to increase their own working capital. And we're seeing, frankly, we're seeing a lot of that right now with companies that are going to RFP. You could use the term pressing their leverage. Uh, I wouldn't use it myself, but some people might. Uh, But they're issuing RFPs for logistic services that are demanding 90 days, 120 days. We've even seen 150-day terms being demanded uh, by uh, shippers to their logistic service providers. And that just hasn't happened before. Historically, the LSPs had enough leverage in the relationship that they could just simply decline and they would reject those programs. And so this is where we find our opportunity to step in. Uh, Triumph Pay comes into the middle of that where relationships are tense, where uh, you know the shipper wants to take longer to pay and optimize their working capital, which is a good business move for them. It's smart for them. Uh, but the LSP is in a very cash, in, cash intensive business. We all know that. They need, to, they need the capital now. And so Triumph Pay comes into that and we automate the settlement of the invoices. So first and foremost, let's let's get all the bad data out of the way, all of the paper. Let's connect the to the system so that we can create frictionless payments. That makes everyone more efficient. We then identify and prevent fraud transactions, fraudulent transactions, making everyone safer. But the last thing we do is we inject our balance sheet into the settlement and payment process to help both sides, the shipper and the LSP, so that the shipper can take as long as they want to pay, and the and the and and yet the LSP can get paid when they need to, to be able to continue to make good, uh, deliver good service. And that's really the focus of Triumph Pay, is automation, fraud prevention, and supply chain finance that helps everybody manage this challenging environment in a, in a better, more, uh, collaborative matter. Uh, I love that. And, and to, to piggyback off of that, clearly being in partnerships, Josh, uh, you, you touched on fraud being a huge aspect of, of what you're doing behind the scenes at, at Triumph Pay. I mean, especially talk about CPG and retail, probably two of the 
biggest industries that that fraud is looking to attack. Can you talk about the partnerships that you've been working on to prevent the fraud in the future and, and really how that uh, is going to continue into 24 as well? Uh, so it's, it's pretty public knowledge that we've got a great relationship with our friends at Highway. Uh, and, yeah. you know, I think I think the last article I saw from Freight Waves said that double brokering in particular is somewhere in the 500 million to 700 million dollar range. We think you undershot it, to be very honest. We, we think that there's a whole lot more than that that isn't detected. And this is what that partnership is allowing us to root out. We're between the data that we have uh, across nearly 300,000 carriers at this point, knowing how they get paid. What, what accounts are theirs, really understanding account ownership and who they are, the identity, and then connecting with Highway and being able to understand also what, uh, what equipment they have, we can figure out programmatically whether we're seeing a, a broker who's clearly has the capacity and, and is, uh, is able to, to uh, deliver that freight using their equipment um, the carrier that's doing the same or that, you know, that carrier has taken 10 loads and they have three power units. Right? And so we're, we're able to be able to identify those issues and bring them to the shipper or bring them to the broker and say, hey, something's going on here that we need to uh, address together. Uh, that, that relationship is fantastic. It's growing uh, and is going to continue. Uh, we do have some other partnerships uh, that are in the in the works that will allow us to um, provide an increased level of transparency and visibility in the industry uh, in certain areas of data. Uh, but uh, those are coming soon and, uh, and, and we'll have more information on that in the new year. Like, yeah, that's exactly what I was about to ask our- you. It, it's, just, <laughs> it's just about your role. And um, Grace can, can verify that because you see we're in the shared document, but I wanted to ask you about your, your role as chief partnerships officer I mean, did the, the partnership with, with Highway, you did one with Hub Trans to sort of expand your capabilities. Is there anything you can say about sort of the direction you're taking the company um, by expanding um, your, your partnership reach? Well, um, Hub Tran we bought. So so we that is now part of Triumph Pay and has been for the last couple of years. And that, that represents our, our audit solution uh, for our broker community. Um, as I mentioned, our, our partnership with Highway is fantastic. We do have partnerships on the shipper side with uh, companies like E2Open, um, Oracle TMS, Trax, and Intelligent Audit. Uh, and those, those partnerships are all meant to deliver uh, uh, a, a integrated experience from uh, TMS to freight audit to payment uh, for our uh, mutual shipper customers. And, uh, and so there, there'll be more of that coming into uh, next year. And then overall, from a partnership standpoint, you know, we, we view um, the TMS community uh, as um, a, a pretty broad spectrum of carrier TMSs, broker and, and 4PL TMSs and shipper TMSs, and those that play in multiple categories, of course. But what we're trying to do within the network is to create stitching that allows those TMSs to submit data in, uh, whether you're a payor TMS or whether you're a payee TMS or an ERP system that's that's looking to either pay invoices or uh, expense invoices uh, on the on the payor side. uh, We're able to be able to to connect that data, uh, eliminate a lot of the paper that's happening uh, in the industry that has happened for, you know, a hundred years and be able to stitch together a frictionless transaction throughout. And and when you see that transaction go from order to pay um, with zero paper, that's when we know that we've been successful. I love that. Again, I uh, love watching Triumph Pay grow. I was a big fan of the Hub Tran uh, back in the day. Was uh, as a customer waiting for that uh, acquisition. So happy to see what you've grown from that as well. And uh, Josh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, it sounds like we'll have some amazing articles to work on into 2024 and the work that you're doing too. And uh, for our audience out there, uh, make sure that you go and subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't already. 
top of the page at FreightWaves.com. Click on newsletters and make sure you uh, join our community there. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe, of course, to our YouTube channel as well. And we'll be back uh, next week with some more content.